It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. All right, fair enough. It's a really cute subject. Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> Make it so. Here we go. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Frankly terrifying. <laughs> The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. I've lost money. There'll be worthy winners. <laughs> Get in there! And valiant losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? Ooh. Or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Uh oh. Say hello to beautiful Devon. Wishing about in a 70s Alfa Romeo spider is auctioneer and jewellery aficionado Izzy Barmer. I'm really loving driving along here and it's bringing back so many childhood memories of holidays spent in Devon. I'm expecting wonders and treasures and antiques aplenty. What a little ray of sunshine. On a nearby country lane. <laughs> and reaching the pinnacle <laughs> of athleticism on her shiny new push bike is Catherine Southern. What do you think of the little plaits? They're a bit short, but I thought they would go quite well with my helmet. A little biker's look, you know. All the gear, no idea. You know the one. <laughs> Catherine has reason to be cheerful after stupendous auction glory last time. And uh, the internet at £280. Bid. Whilst things for Izzy were a little different. 40, 35. It sells very cheaply at £45. This is disastrous. Definitive idea of what I'm looking for. At this point, I just need to narrow the gap and, and play the long game. So, I mean, it's all to play for. You betcha. The superbly enthusiastic Izzy started out with £200 and could do better. She has £180.30 pennies for today. While Catherine has a fountain of riches with a weighty wadge of £408. <laughs> £408! <laughs> that farmer's looking at me as if I'm mad. You could be right. No, you're just full of the joys. They set out from Storrington, visiting the emporiums of the sunny south coast. They will now head further southwest before scampering around the Cornish coast and finishing their quest in Bristol. First, time for a catch up. Morning. 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 That's what I love about you, Izzy, always punctual. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> I think you're the first person to say that. What do you think of when you think of Devon? Cream tea. Potted cream. Yes. Lots of it. A whole heap of it. Oh, how scrumptious. Cream first, of course. Well, on that note, Catherine, see you later. Have a good day shopping. Thanks. Woohoo! Let the thrill of the antiques chase begin. I can tell you now that tight jeans and a bicycle do not go well together. They are not a good mix. I'm looking for, the only thing that I know is I am looking for items to make big profits so that I can beat Catherine. This morning, our glam gals are shopping solo for an auction in Seaton. First stop for Izzy is a visit to the town of Tiverton. Situated in the heart of Devon, Izzy's found this fine establishment for a mooch. With £180.30, pence, let's see what tickles her fancy in here. Well, the jacket's off. She must mean business. This girl is on the hunt. Hey, you're not on the rostrum now, Izzy. <laughs> This is a little Carfley bowl. So Carfley is really easy to confuse with Royal Worcester. There is very easily to distinguish on this one, a little C, but Royal Worcester marked their items with a crescent. So the two are very difficult to distinguish between. Although Carfley ran for a limited period of time, some believe they produced some of the finest soft paste porcelain made in the 18th century. To a Carfley collector, there are certain 
designs that they would pay a lot of money for. This one has got a little bit of an oriental look to it, £68. So for me, that is too much money. Um, however, I do like it. It's just nice, isn't it? So that is a definite maybe. With such a keen start to proceedings, let's check in with Miss Moneybags. How much do I have, birds? Did you say £408? I believe you did. God, that feels good. That feels so good! Hey, yeah. they'll hear you in the next county, Catherine. <laughs> With the greatest of pedal power, Catherine's arrived in the town of Dulberton. Home to one of the oldest medieval bridges on Exmoor. Oh, isn't it lovely here? And look, there's Catherine's first shop of the day. With unbelievable excitement, off she goes. Ah, and we want no more shouting, either. Looks like a nice shop, though, doesn't it? Plenty of stuff. Who's he? Under the watchful eye of dealer Paul, she spotted this little christening set. The thing that silver dealers dread more than anything, and probably the things that they think are the least saleable, are christening sets. And here we've got a spoon and a shovel. But as christening sets go, this is probably one of the best ones. First of all, the beauty of it. It's a really stylish thing. And of course, the name on it. George Jensen or Jorg Jensen? Jorg Jensen. Jorg Jensen. Considered one of Denmark's most famous and influential designers, George Jensen Silverware would have been highly prized at the beginning of the 20th century and remains so today. The mother? I mean, that would have been quite a... Look at yeah, my yeah. child's got this beautiful Absolutely. gift. It's got a really nice weight to yeah. it, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. You dated this to 1910, 1925. I'm guessing there's a mark there's on a the mark back. on the spoon, yes. On the spoon. The style of the mark changed every 30 or 40 years, yeah. They're quite high price-wise. You've got 160. I did buy it very well, so I can do those for 80 quid. Well, I like this. This, this. this is... This could be a keeper. I'm going to keep it safe <laughs> in my pocket. May I explore the rest of your shop? Have a good look round, yes, Thank please. You. Thank you. I will come back, promise. While Catherine continues exploring, what of Miss Bulmer over in Tiverton? This is a Chinese beaker. And this one depicts the three-toed dragon. So usually a three-toed dragon means it's Chinese, whereas a four- or a five-toed dragon tends to indicate it's a Japanese item. It's, I would imagine, 19th century on this one. It's got quite a good weight to it. I have also spotted a repair, but I'm sort of thinking it might be worth a punt if I can get it at the right price just because it's usable, it's decorative, it's pretty, and sometimes Chinese items, they just fly at auction. And I would really love it if this one did. It's priced at £38, and with the Carfley bowl priced at £68, it's time to find Clive. Stand by. If you were to have the two together, then we'd make that a nice round 80. I was thinking 20 and 30. So you're saying 50. Yes. I'm saying 80. I think we know where we're going. We'll do a round 60 for you. Would you really? Yes, we would. 40, 50, 60. Well done. The Carfley Bowl for 35 and the Chinese Beaker for 25. Izzy now has £120.30 pennies left to spend, which is great. Now, is Catherine still giddy in Dulverton? Now, I know exactly what is in this box before I open it, because I have these at home. These are a collection of specimen slides. Slides that you would put under a microscope and have a good look at gnat's legs or um, an insect's tongue. Lovely. I See, I love things like this. You're probably like, that's just absolutely awful. But I think things like this, just, just fascinating. It's something to talk about. These are prepared, I would have thought, maybe by a school teacher. Fairly amateur. And these are dated as well to 1956, 1957. They sell quite well, so something that I might consider. Let's ask Paul his best then. I like your little specimen set. 
Especially I bought them for 30, so I'm happy with 40, just a small profit for me. Like I'm that. Happy. I like that very much. Earlier, I also liked the silver, you which did, I which you've still about have. Your, Don't you worry, person. I've still got those. I'm probably going to go for that. It's okay. a bit of a gamble. Yeah, it's kind of the market, doesn't it? But yeah, I mean, gosh, yeah, you couldn't go for two completely different items if you tried. So 40 for that, and then you said 80. I did, yes. Okay, I do believe 120 pounds. Okay. Wish me luck. We have a deal. Thank you very much indeed. Good thanks luck, and for, I thanks hope for you having win. me. Nice man. <laughs> a very nice man indeed. After that bumper buy, Catherine has £288 remaining. <laughs> Meanwhile, Izzy's getting to know the spider. Oh! <laughs> we might do this round every corner now. Here I come! Whatever toots your horn, girl. She's heading west to the Devon village of Swimbridge. The birthplace of the world-famous pooch, the Jack Russell Terrier. Izzy has travelled here to find out just how this cheeky little terrier became a globally renowned breed. Back in the 19th century, Parson John Jack Russell was vicar of the church here, which is where I was christened. <laughs> Something of an enigma, he was a clergyman with a thirst for hunting and as such he was looking for the ultimate canine companion. Local historian David Netherway has all the answers on how this adored pooch came to be. He wanted the perfect terrier, one that had long enough legs to keep up with the hounds and the horses all day, was small enough and brave enough to go to the earth with the foxes. And how did he go about creating it? He had in his mind what he wanted, mm -hmm. and luckily, whilst he was at Oxford, at the university there studying, he met a milkman who had what he considered would be the perfect terrier for him. Russell was very happy to find the dog of his dreams, and I guess the milkman was happy to sell it. Trump was the name of this long-legged little terrier, and in 1819, she was used to breed the ultimate fox terrier. I think Reverend John would have thought that she was just right because she had the right uh, bravery, mm -hmm. passive sort of aggressiveness, so it would uh, drive out the fox from the earth but not damage it so yeah. that the hunt could continue. And a very intelligent dog, and that's a characteristic of them today. So this is something that he wanted to instill into the breed? Yes, I think so. The colour of her, is that important? Well, it was white so that uh, she was easy to distinguish from uh, any of the animals that she was hunting. The Reverend Jack Russell successfully established his brave and nimble terrier as a distinct breed by the 1850s and continued to rear his dream dog to the hunting community until he died in his late 80s in 1883. He lived to a ripe old age and would have been doing that all his life, I think, to try and get the, the very best one. His terriers were much in demand all over the, the place. So it was a lifelong passion? He had lots of passions, I think. <laughs> the Terriers would have been uh, the one which he's most famous for. Yes. Oh, Stan Lively. Fast forward to present day, and members of the Parson Russell Terrier Club have gathered to show just how stupendously cute these little fellas are. Club member Margaret has a little chum for Izzy. Who's this then? This is Ada, and she's seven years old. Uh, she's beautiful. Yeah, she's Parson Russell Terrier. Similar to the original breed that Reverend Jack Russell created. Yes, the longer legged. The Parson Russell Terriers, if you look at them, they're, they're quite um, square. Uh -huh. The Parson Russell Terrier should not be confused with its modern descendant, the Jack Russell. Prepare for extreme doggy cuteness. This is Crumble. She's only a baby, she's only six months old. I was going to say, she looks a lot smaller. Yeah, when you put them together, you can really see the difference. Obviously shorter in the leg, longer in the body. Okay. The Parsons can have a slightly longer nose, but waggly tail. <laughs> Is one better than the other? Unbiased answer. Unbiased answer. <laughs> I, I would have to say the Parson Russell Terrier because that's that's the one that we've uh, we've been breeding for quite a long time. And that's the original, isn't it? The original, yeah. yeah. The, the Jack Russells are, are amazing dogs as well. I mean, looking at Crumble, she is such a cutie. I know. They get away with murder. I am not surprised. Yeah. Look at that face. Good girl. 
Nowadays, the gritty little terriers love nothing more than a bit of doggy agility. So let's get involved. Hello, Brandy. Are we going to have a go? Right, you're going to have to be good with me, Brandy, because I've never done this before. You might need a Brandy after this goal. And over. Oh, I'm the wrong side, aren't I? No! Oh, dear. Come on, then. Oh, no, where are we going? Come on, this way. Oh, good girl. Four. And through the tunnel. Oh, no, not the leaf. Come on, look, this way. Through the tunnel. Look, treat, tunnel. Treat. Come on, then, Brandy. Let's take you back to your mummy. Brandy, you're showing me up here. Come on, over we go. That's it. Over we go. Good girl, you've done this before. Oh, this is much better. Through the tunnel. I can do this. Come on, Brandy. Over. Maybe just yeah. stick to the day job, eh, Izzy? Well done. The original Foxing Terrier, created by Parson Jack Russell in the 19th century, is a living piece of history. Long may this feisty little fellow reign. Lovely. Now, Catherine, push bike. Happy? I am enjoying being with nature, but I do feel that Izzy should have a go soon. She's younger than me. Oof. I think you're doing fabulously, Catherine. She's actually just a few miles away in the lovely old town, which happens to be my birthplace, Barnstable, otherwise known in Roman times as Barum. Selected Antiques and Trinkets is Catherine's last shopping stop for today. Opened six years ago, it's literally rammed to the rafters. Catherine's purse is stacked full with £288. So go, girl! So much. I'm just completely bamboozled. I don't know where to start because, I mean, you could not cram another thing in these cabinets. But it's not too long before the antiques detector goes off. Beep, 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 beep. And this is a little set of dishes. I suppose you could say, what are they for? They're nice heart shape. I don't think they're intended as heart shape, leaf shape, really. But I suppose you could say they're a set of ashtrays, little bonbons. You could call them pin trays or pip dishes. I don't know what you like, really, but they're nice because there's a set of six. Nice and heavy. Possibility. How much? 165. Let's check it out with dealer Ruben. How about a straight 100? OK, I'm thinking. Can, can we park those we for a can. moment? We will park those park there. Park those for a moment. OK. He's a cheeky fellow. It's a, a pourer, so the liquid comes out of his bill, I guess. It's plated. I thought it was pewter from a distance, but it's not a silver plate. I like that. There's quite nice detail in it as well. And you've got £29 on it, which doesn't seem too bad. If I went for the pelican and the dishes, can you do so something then? How about 120 for the two? I tell you what, can we say 115 and then we're done? Go on then. Same yeah. as you, 115. 86 for the set of silver dishes and 29 for the little pelican pourer. Oh, I do love a pelican pourer. <laughs> Tempus Fugit, it's time for our gallop around Devon to pause. Very, very pleased to have the car, but I suspect that Catherine will have earned her dinner more than I have. I need to relax. I need to relax in a big bubble bath, and I need to stay there until tomorrow, because I am exhausted. Oh, good plan. Nighty night. Rise and shine, a new day rings a distinct change in someone. I am very happy to be back in the spider, especially with the roof off and the sun shining. It does feel good. It's a lot easier on the thighs as well, I can tell you that. Oh, lordy. And a beach rendezvous is first on the to-do list. And there's Izzy, look. Wow. Hey, Catherine, make sure you don't knock her down. <laughs> Morning, morning. Oh, morning, Catherine. <laughs> you know Did what? you have a good day? I had a really great day. Do you want to see what I've bought? Yes, 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 please. Don't hold back, Catherine. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's and. Beautiful. And. Oh, it's Colfley. I like that. Where's 35. That? <laughs> that's nothing. Yeah. Izzy also bought the 19th century Chinese beaker. Sometimes. Chinese items, they just fly at auction. Giving her £120.30 to splash today. 
Meanwhile, Catherine has £173 remaining after her splurge on the box of specimen slides. A rabbit's kidney. Delicious. Plus, a set of silver dishes, the Pelican wine pourer and the George Jensen christening set of a spoon and shoveler. Do you know what, Catherine? I think that is the most beautiful christening set I've ever seen. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> truly, truly I do. That's what I wanted to hear. So come on then, Catherine, how much did you pay? <laughs> £80. £80! See, I, I'd have paid 90 Anyway, time for you to go and buy some more items. Let's split, ladies. Have a safe journey. And go off and multiply. <laughs> Cycling get up's really quite easy. I'm just whizzing down the hills. Although there is a nice big hill ahead of me. Oh no. Oh, I should I spoke far too soon. <laughs> oh dear. The experts will be sending their goodies to an auction in Seaton, but first, Izzy is in Great Torrington. Once the powerhouse of 19th century glove production, but today it's shiny antiques we want. Hopefully inside the town's Victorian indoor market where Fiddlesticks Trading Company lives. What a great name. Here we go. All of a sudden I feel really nervous. I think the pressure has suddenly hit me. Last day to find those treasures that can even just catch up with Catherine. I'd be delighted with. Hmm. Come on, Izzy. Channel your fighting spirit, girl, and be the comeback kid. You can do it. So this is a little Edwardian bar brooch. The ladies would wear these sort of, like, frilly blouses, and so they might have... They're called lace pins, but you might have worn it as a little lace pin. More commonly, they would wear a more oval one, but you can see them with all this frill and lace going on, having just a little simple brooch here. When the pin's longer and extends over, that would be an indication that it's Victorian, but at the turn of the century and, you know, sort of in that region, they did get shorter. So this one, I think, you are looking at the early 20th century on it. It's priced at £30. Prepare yourself, dealer Ricky. Very, very, very best you could do on this one. Well, 25. That seems very fair to me. Give you 25 smackers? Or is that something else? Is that a kiss? <laughs> I'm not going to give you 25 kisses. Here we are, £25. I don't think kisses are legal tender, Izzy. That neat little buy gives Izzy £95 and 30 pence for the rest of the day. Meanwhile, where is our beloved Catherine? This is bliss. Devon, I'm in love with you. Laid-back Catherine has taken the scenic route and has now arrived in Great Torrington too. Different shop, though. Collectability is where our girl is headed. Catherine is still loaded with cashola. She has four items and £173 left. What is she going to do? Mmm, orange. This is quite nice to have your breakfast on, or brunch even. OK, so this folds down either side, so when you... Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Always causing a racket, this girl. That's all right, isn't it? I like the fact that it's slightly stepped here. I like the fact that it's shaped like the movement of the legs all folding in, sort of almost metamorphic, and then you can walk away with it. This is dating from the Edwardian period when an affluent married woman would have enjoyed the extravagance of chamber dining. £26, I think, to have your breakfast bought on this for £26. That's very cheap, £26. Prepare yourself, Janine. No, I have made a decision. I am going to go for the tray. Yes, and that is different. Something. I like it. I really like it. Thank you. £26 for a bygone extravagance. The Edwardian breakfast tray. Thank you. You're welcome. Look who's just arrived. <laughs> Not content with one shop in Torrington, Izzy's muscling in on the one Catherine's just left. This is a marrow scoop. So it's silver and it's a proper antique. It's Georgian. I love anything Georgian. I just think, you know, that Regency period, or even earlier, it was so glamorous. Just think of the history. 
It's over 200 years old and it's in pretty good nick. Roasted bone marrow was a real delicacy in the 18th century when meat was expensive, but nowadays smart folk apparently use them for eating zabaglione. Cost, please? It's at 95. I still could lose on it at auction. So this is why I need to talk to Janine and see what she can do on it, really. Oh, Janine! What could we do on this? I'd do it at 60. I'd like to see you make a profit. Thank you so much. You're welcome. There we go, £60. Pounds. The Georgian silver marrow scoop leaves Izzy with only £35.30 pounds and 30 pence to spare. There we go, mounting up. Oh, look, cheeky marrow scoops in her back pocket. <laughs> Back in the spider, Catherine's footloose and fancy free. If I had an option, I would probably head straight down to the beach. I would get my ice cream and I would head into the sea. Catherine might be in holiday mode, but before she buys a 99, she's making her way to the only village with an exclamation mark in the whole of the UK. The seaside loveliness of Westwood Ho! She's meeting up with Devon historian Dr Todd Gray, who's uncovered a revelation about the centuries-old Cornish pasty. It's lovely to meet you on such a beautiful day. Well, welcome to Devon. Thank you. It's wonderful. Now, you say Devon, yet you're sitting here eating a pasty. People tend to think a pasty is Cornish. Absolutely. But, but they've got a very rich and long history which most people don't know anything about. That sounds interesting. In 2006, history sleuth Dr Gray found evidence within a 16th century audit book that challenged the origins of the Cornish pasty by revealing it was originally a Devonian delicacy. Well, I never did, my dear. Well, that document's interesting because it's 250 years earlier than any reference to a Cornish pasty. OK. Hence the controversy over it showing that Plymouth people or Devon people had pasties before the Cornish. Right. This rare and exciting discovery revealed a pasty of the utmost pomp and ceremony. In 1510, the clerk at Plymouth recorded into the great um, city book all the expenses for what I think was the civic dinner to celebrate the coronation of Henry VIII. So we have pepper, pastry, venison, all being paid for for the cook to bake into a pasty. So it was quite a rich dish then. Oh, it was, it was a great big upmarket presentation piece to impress people. And it wasn't just for grandiose occasions. For some of these recipes, it's for very ordinary people yeah. who couldn't afford much. And it was a way of making things stretch a bit. Yes. This ancient fast food has been around since the 13th century. But it wasn't until the boom in tin mining in the Industrial Revolution that it became a staple for the hungry Cornish miner. And the test of a good pasty was if it could survive being dropped down a mine shaft. Ha! What's the main difference then between the Devon pasty and the Cornwall pasty? Well, historically, I don't think there is one. OK. But according to modern tradition and belief and use, and the way we, we do them now, it's in the crimping. It's all in the crimping. That is difficult to prove, partly because so many Cornish and Devon people cross the border. What granny might have taught you, what you might have thought as tradition, may be a different county's tradition altogether, but it's become a bit mixed. With the 500-year-old document in mind, Catherine and Dr Gray have a mission for a nearby bakery that know a thing or two about this golden pastry pillow of deliciousness. Baker Graham Blight has the task of recreating an ancient pasty with the unique ingredient of venison. Will it get the thumbs up from our modern-day testers? That does smell good. That's very rich. I'm really looking forward to see how they turn out. So am I. Right, what do we do then? So watch and learn. OK. You're speedy. It's all in the wrist, isn't it? Absolutely perfect. Right, we ready? Scoop down. See, it's easy, isn't it? Really easy. So if I were 
in Cornwall now. What's the difference, really, in the crimping? The main difference is, whereas we spread the filling out as far to the edge as we can get, mm -hmm. the Cornish, they will do that and pl Right, I see. I apologise to any of my friends in Cornwall. That's not a very good attempt. That looks nothing like yours. Mine's just got fingernails in it. Yeah, and you've got quite a lot of pastry, but you've got another dozen there to practise on. Gents, what do you think? Well, I'd say that is well worth a five, probably north of five. Oh. And I think when it comes out of the oven, I think you'll be pleasantly Ten. surprised. Yeah, go on, Graham. Let's bake these little beauties. Now, will this ancient recipe tantalise the taste buds? OK, I'm going in. Mm. That venison is delicious. Should we get something to wash it down? I think that's a great idea. That's lovely. Now, where is lovely Izzy? Going like a good one. Yeah, but apprehensive that I only have £35 to spend and I'm also really proud of myself because I think I might spend all of my money. Wow, go for it, Izzy. The final shopping spot is in famous five country in the Cornish town of Bude. Satis House takes its name from the cobwebbed Miss Havisham's abode in Dickens' Great Expectations. They house all sorts of curiosities in here. Very ritzy. Flame-haired dealer Cara is the lady at the helm. First impressions, what a crazy shop you've got. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what a tonic. distillery thermometer for kegs or barrels, which to me screams gin and or whiskey. Big ticks in my opinion. But it's a bit different and a bit quirky and a pub might want it or you could have it hanging on the wall. It'd certainly be a talking point. But maybe just a tad too niche. <laughs> Anything else? Hmm. What have you got there, Izzy? Now I'm confused because there's two kind of similar, kind of different mirrors, like a pair but not a pair. As you can see, they're kind of similar but they've got a completely different decoration. They're both 19th century and they're both typical Victorian decorations. And you've got the birds and the flowers here and you've got the, the urns and the garland and swag sort of traditional style going on here. So this, was, this is typically Victorian, as is this. And then both of them have this lovely beveled glass, and beveled glass is an indication of quality. Right here, then. The ticket price on each mirror is £18. Cara! What would we be looking at if I bought the two? Um, and it's kind 25 of... is the lowest. It's the lowest. I can... OK. Do you know what? You are being really, really generous. I think I am going to go for the two mirrors. The Victorian mirrors leave Izzy's pot of cash with just £10 and pennies. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good so luck with much. that. The shopping is now over. It will be interesting to see what happens at the auction, because I've bought quite a nice mix, but this lovely little spider is going to get me there in style. I'm not sure about Izzy, though. <laughs> well, I have done all that I can. I've given it my best shot. Off to the auction next. The antiques grappling will continue tomorrow. For now, time to get some shut-eye, eh? We're up an atom along the shingly shores of the Devon Jurassic coastline, where auction fisticuffs will take place at Lion Bay Auctions in the southeast Devon town of Seaton. Oh, look at this, Catherine. Well, look at you. You look gorgeous in your dress. In oh, your dress. thank you. Well, Absolutely so you, stunning. You, you've gone all classic in a little black gone dress. gone black. I love the way we're completely ignoring the antiques. It's all about fashion. Fashion. All about dresses. dresses. What's important in life? <laughs> Let the antiques clash begin. <laughs> Catherine.
patrons splurge £261 on five lots. Oh, I love this. It's novelty and it's usable and it's got some age to it. It's not a modern reproduction. Better put him down. Otherwise, I might find that I have swapped it with one of my items before she notices. Izzy went for it and parted with £170 also on five lots. Izzy has been incredibly smart and she has picked out the fact that it's got an Exeter mark on it. Well, we're not Exeter, but it's not too far away. You are one smart cookie, Miss Izzy B. You've done it. The man with the gavel is auctioneer Simon Watson. Go on, tell us your faves. The Edwardian breakfast tray in mahogany. Breakfast is the way forward, in my opinion. It's got the right look for the moment. And I think this is going to do well. And there's a pair of Victorian brass wall mirrors. I mean, they are a little on the small side, but the quality is really nice. They are what people like, and I'm sure they're going to do well. Right, ladies, take up your positions and see who can clinch auction glory today. Here they come. It's going to be an interesting auction, I think. Got a real mixture today, haven't we? Yes. And none more so than the first lot, Catherine's mid-century specimen slides. I mean, I collect these at home, so it's quite boring. What do you think of them? I truly really like these. I think they're going to do really well. £40, £40 I have. Oh, he's got a bid. I am 42. That's 42 a profit. Now. Come on. Selling at £42, fair warning. Every little helps, Catherine. A couple of pounds is a couple of pounds. I don't like a couple of pounds. I like lots of pounds. Let's see if Izzy's Georgian marrow scoop can gouge out some big profits. I've got secret high hopes, fingers crossed, for this one. What do we say? £60? Oh, no. 60 online. £60 pounds I have. Come on in tonight. They will see it. 65 is bid and we're looking for 70. The bid is online at 70, we're bid now. Come 75, on. 80, it's a good thing this. Come for on. 85, come on, make come on, no mistake. 85 now. 85 pounds online. Any further interest in the room? If not, the hammer's up. Fair warning to you all. Hey, some lucky buyers just got a bargain. But you still made a profit. Come on, let's be happy. Catherine's set of silver dishes are next. <laughs> Perhaps I paid a little bit too much, £86. I think they're really sweet, though. On the book, start the bidding at £50. I feel really nervous for you. No, no, it's fine. I'm 55, 60, 65, sir. Come on. I'm selling at 65. Ouch. That's early days, Catherine. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> what a shame, she says. She doesn't care. She's <laughs> Let's see how Izzy's Chinese beaker fares. My honest opinion is I have no idea what this is going to make. I really don't know. Could be 20, could be 200, could be 2,000, I hope not. <laughs> 20 pounds I have at the back of the room. I've got 20 pounds. Anybody, please? I'm selling for 20. Sorry, OK, so it wasn't 200 pounds or 2,000 pounds, it was 20. It didn't quite take off in the old profit stakes. It's a minuscule loss. It's Catherine's favourite now, the George Jensen christening set. I think it is lovely and it is a really, really good name and it's early. £70. £70 we bid online. £70 I have and I'm looking for £75, which I now have. And £80. All good. And £85 and £90. Come on, sir. It's £85 at the back of the room. Hammers up. That's got a smidgen of a profit in it. Another great buy for a lucky bidder. I actually did think that would do a bit better than that. Yeah, moving on to Izzy's Edwardian gold brooch now. But £25, I mean, it's worth that in scrap gold, isn't it? Oh, I do hope so. £20 I have, and I'm looking for 22 oh. 22 now online, giving the internet hours to catch up. Give them days. days. <laughs> Selling at 22, fair warning. Oh, Handing as much at 25 at the yes! back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm selling for 25, fair warning. A pretty thing, but not a pretty profit. I'm not buying any no, more no, brooches. No, I'm not buying any more brooches. We'll hold you to that. 
Catherine's pelican wine pourer is next. Who doesn't like a pelican? They're cool and on trend, Catherine. I like to be on trend. And I can start the bidding at £28. Oh. 28 pounds. 30 I have now and I'm looking for 32. 32 on the book and I'm looking for 35. He's got 32. 35 back Ooh, left. 35 well done, now, sir. What taste you have. £35 pounds I have. Apparently to the incredibly tasteful gentleman back left. That was fun. Novelty sells. Pity it wasn't a bit more. Catherine, you are on a roll. Izzy's 18th century find now. The Carfley Bowl is up for grabs. I think it's lovely. Lovely pattern with the mother and child. £50, any interest at £50? £50 I have. For Come 55. on, let's have another I'm, bid. I'm selling for 50 fair warning. Sorry, probably not. But it's still a profit. And your second one of today, girl. We're going up, Izzy. We are going up. Fingers crossed. Catherine's breakfast tray is next under the gavel. Could be like breakfast in bed. I love breakfast in bed. I never have breakfast. It's like a TV bed. dinner. TV dinner. <laughs> Forty pounds. Forty pounds. I have you. Forty pounds. Starting bid of forty pounds. Forty-two there. Forty-five, sir. 45, 48. 50. They like a breakfast in bed round here, don't they? Fifty pounds. I'm selling of 50. Fair warning. It's your service. A touch of breakfast extravagance has brought home some bacon. I'm happy with that. Izzy's last attempt for fortune lies with the Victorian mirrors. You paid absolutely nothing for them, £25, so there is definitely a profit there. Start the bidding, what should we say? Uh, £60. That would be amazing. That would be fantastic. £60 would be fantastic. <laughs> 90 now. <laughs> you never guess who owns these. I can't imagine. 90 pounds <laughs> selling for 90. This is such 40. a good feeling. Your cheeks 40 are pounds like... I have and I'm moving for 42. And why not? That's the biggest earner of the day. Many congratulations, Izzy. It could be either of us who's won that. I really don't know. Who knows? It's anyone's game. Well, I do. <laughs> Let's look at the sun. Catherine started with £408 and, after auction costs, made a small loss of £17.46. Izzy began with £108.30 and, after sale room costs, made a lovely profit of £51.40. And, after all of that, there's only one way to celebrate. Fine. This is a proper ice cream. Proper ice cream for a proper lady. Izzy, I think you should go and take a dip. It looks absolutely <laughs> freezing in that sea. Come on, then. Time to hit the road. <laughs>